Welcome back to part five. In this supplemental part, we'll cover an alternative input method using command line arguments. The programs that we previously wrote prompted the user for input and then read it in using printf and scanf respectively. This is known as interactive input because it assumes that there's a human being sitting at the keyboard being asked for input and they're interacting with the program by providing it. However, the vast majority of programs are not interactive. The point after all of writing programs is to automate processes. An alternative to interactive input is to require users to provide command line arguments or CLAs via the command line interface or CLI. This works by providing arguments delimited by spaces when you execute a program. In this example, there are actually five arguments. The first argument is always the executable file name, in this case a.out. 10, 20, 3.5, and hello are four other arguments. Programs can access the input arguments using the argv parameter in the main function. Argv here is short for argument vector, a list of arguments. The first argument, which is again the executable file name, is always stored at argv sub 0. Subsequent arguments are in argv sub 1, argv sub 2, etc. A program can determine how many arguments were provided using the argc or argument count value in the main function. It's important to understand that each command line argument is a string and not necessarily an integer or a double. Thus, it may be necessary to convert the argument to the appropriate type of variable. To convert an argument to an integer, you use a to i. This function stands for alphanumeric, that is a string, to integer i. The a to f function can be used likewise to convert an alphanumeric string argument to a double value. Let's take a look at a quick example. Here I have the first program from our previous exercise. Let's go ahead and copy it and make a command line argument version of it instead. Instead of prompting the user for input, we'll assume that they're in the argument vector. Now let's see this work. If we don't provide any command line arguments, it'll seg fault out on us. So let's provide those three arguments now. And it works. If we provide more arguments, they're ignored. If we provide fewer arguments, then again we get a segmentation fault. If we provide arguments that don't conform to our expectations, then they're treated as zero when they are parsed out. As a preview of our next module, let's deal with this now. I'll write a conditional statement here to check that the user at least gave the three arguments that we expect. This states that if the argument count, argc, is not equal to 4, then we'll go ahead and error out on them. Exit 1 immediately terminates the program. I checked that the user actually gave me four arguments because the first argument is always the executable file name. Now when I don't provide enough command line arguments, it'll print the error message and exit instead. <laughs> 